This is a story of hard work, persistence, and innovation. It's a true American success story about a young man who rescued a neglected machine shop and built it into one of the world's leading suppliers of thermal management solutions for power systems. This is the story of Horton. Founded in 1902, Horton started out by making wagon and truck boxes. In 1914, Horton invented the variable speed clutch pulley, a mechanical device for feeding paper into machines at mills and printing presses. Decades later, a World War II veteran with an entrepreneurial spirit named Hugh Schilling rounded up a small group of investors to purchase Horton for $50,000 in 1951. While his fellow investors shared controlling stock, Hugh ran daily operations as minority owner, multitasking as plant manager, assembly worker, janitor, purchasing agent, and salesman. In the early 1950s, Horton developed the Power Stripper, a machine used to punch out die cuts in cardboard, which became an instant success. The next decade, Horton invented the Air Champ, similar to the variable speed clutch pulley, but on a smaller scale. Soon after, a representative in Australia expressed interest in selling Horton products, so Horton signed a licensing agreement with a Melbourne-based company to manufacture and sell Horton's industrial clutches, and later its vehicle fan clutches across the continent. Horton matched its expanding geographical footprint with new product development, adapting an industrial clutch to mount on the engines of fleet trucks and off-road mining vehicles. In 1971, the energy crisis nearly quadrupled the price of diesel fuel across the U.S. overnight. Demand for an on-off fan clutch that would run the cooling fan just 5% of the time took off under energy conservation and stricter noise abatement legislation. In 1974, Horton formally broke ground on a 14,000-foot fan clutch plant in Britain, South Dakota. By 1976, Hugh Schilling bought out the last member of the original 1951 investor group and became the sole owner of Horton. In 1978, Horton reached a milestone 10 years in the making, becoming standard on its first big original equipment manufacturer, Denton, Texas-based Peterbilt Motors Company. Throughout the 1980s, Horton was the dominant player in diesel engine cooling. Advances such as electric controls, higher torque, and maintenance-free bearings, all developed at the new R&D test facility in Britain, solidified Horton's leadership. The 1980s would see Horton become the standard at Kenworth, as well as Freightliner and International Harvester, later renamed Navistar. In 1993, Horton embraced the remanufacturing concept and opened a facility in Britain specifically to rebuild its used fan clutches. Product innovation of the 90s included the add-on fan clutch, an electromagnetic fan clutch for medium-duty applications, and a spring-engaged model. International expansion continued with the opening of a sales office in Mexico City on Horton's way to establishing a presence on every continent. In 2000, Horton broke ground on a new corporate headquarters in Roseville, Minnesota, featuring a state-of-the-art technical center for testing products and vehicle applications. In 2001, Horton entered a joint venture with ZF Sachs of Schweinfurt, Germany to produce viscous fan drives. The joint venture would build a brand new manufacturing and test facility in 2002, and Horton acquired 100% of the joint venture in 2003, renaming it Horton Europe. In 2004, Horton acquired engineered cooling systems of Carmel, Indiana, adding fans to the product portfolio to go along with fan drives. In 2020, Horton outgrew their landlocked Carmel, Indiana plant, and fan production was moved to a brand new, state-of-the-art facility in Oconee County, South Carolina. Horton continued their global growth in 2020, establishing Horton Cooling Equipment in Wuxi, China, and opening an assembly facility there in 2022. Throughout the 2000s and 2010s, Horton continued partnering with customers and bringing innovative new products to market. All told, Horton now employs more than 500 people in six countries. Throughout its growth, Horton has worked hard to keep its culture intact, one focused on the value of each contributor, with an eye on adapting products for new customer needs in a rapidly shifting market. 
So what will Horton look like in 25 years? Well, the future happens because of the groundwork laid in the present. With the rapid change of technology, Horton may be in an entirely different business or system. But if Horton continues listening to the customer, its future will be very bright.